Hello everyone. Today we will having a new topic to discuss. By the way, let me introduce myself. This is Mera Andrevik Avila from BSF2B and we are the last presenter of the topic The Evolution of Social Forestry and Programs in the Philippines. So, this topic is divided into four categories. First is the colonial period. Second is the pioneering period. Third is the integration and consolidation period. And last is the institutionalization period. So I think we are all ready. So let's start with the colonial period. So the colonial period is characterized by a state controlled centralized system of forest management which maintained ownership over forest lands. The concept of industrial forestry remained the dominant principle of forest management. Thus, the government always tried to evacuate forest dwellers and control kainian. The centralized character of their policies can be understood as an anti-devolution policy trust. So, on 1863, the Spanish colonizers established the Inspection General de Montes, or IGM. It is a forestry agency task to survey the extent of forest resources in the country. So, what is Inspection General de Montes? Inspection General de Montes was inaugurated under the Spanish government pursuant in Spanish royal decree. It features the state forest agency declares the right to control forest access and utilization. Moving on to 1874, the Spanish government banned the shifting cultivation. Why it is banned? The government prohibits shifting cultivation methods because they condemn such practices as harmful to the forest. But in 1889, the definitive forest laws and regulations, royal decree of the King of Spain, the slash and burn cultivation of Kaingin in the upland areas was prohibited with heavy penalties awaiting violators. We all know that slash and burn agriculture is one of the largest contributors to air pollution and um, it is also illegal here in the philippines under the forestry reform code of the philippines of 1975 so let's move on to 1901 so kaingin law act number 274 it says here that Kaingin Neros and other forest occupants were to be persecu persecuted, imprisoned, and evicted from the forest areas. So, it is more strict here because in the Act number 274, naging law na talaga na bawal ang magkat ng or bawal ang kaingin. In this Act, if any person violated to this provision, it will be punished or paid a fine and will be imprisoned. So, moving on to 1904, Forest Act of 1904, number 1148, basic forest policy of the state, the public forest of the Philippines shall be held and administered for the protection of the public interest the utility and safety of the forest and the perpetuation thereof is in productive condition by wise use. So here, the kaingin was declared to be no longer absolutely prohibited. Ngunit, if you don't have permit or authority, you will be punished. So my, pa my punishment ang lumalabag talaga sa batas o sa akma ito. So, on 1917, the Administrative Code of 1917 Act Number 2711, the state established communal forests and pastures for the use of communities. 
Pero, under pa rin siya sa state. So, ang state pa rin ang mag-control. Although, they have a communal or forest pastures. Because, um, this policy was reiterated the state basic forestry policy number 1148 on 1904 so in 1939 the policy program act number 447 commonwealth the director of forestry was given the authority to allow or disallow shifting cultivation and forest occupancy pursuant to provision of act number 1148 so on 1941 there was a revised communal forest regulation forestry administrative order number 1401 the secretary of agriculture and commerce set aside communal forest upon the endorsement of the director of forestry and the request of municipal councils the resident of the municipality were granted the privilege to cut, collect, and remove free of charge forest products for their personal use. So, isiniset aside muna yung uh, communal forest at my endorsement to the, the director of forestry. And then, the residents of the municipality is granted or they have a privilege to cut the trees and forest products pero um, in their personal use only so let's move on to the next presenter miss emery panizales good day everyone this is emery panizales from bsf 2b and my topic is all about the pioneering period of evolution of social forestry policies and programs in the Philippines. So, pioneering period began in 1964 and its program or policy is Kaingin Council Meeting. Representatives from the government, the private, and academic sectors recognized that the problem was to a great part socio-economic in nature, as well as being technical and legal problem. So, pioneering period also began in 1965. It is the National Conference on Kaingin Problem. Recommended the relocation or resettlement of shifting cultivators and increasing the jobs in the lowland agriculture sector. The relocation for or resettlement of forest occupants were never successful and jobs in the agriculture sector were never sufficient. Next is the Kaingin Management and Land Settlement Regulations or Forestry Administrative Order Number 62. Its feature focus on the containment rather than punishment of, fo of forest occupants. Kaingeros or slush and burn cultivators were allowed to remain in the public forest land provided they undertake soil conservation and tree farming activities in fixed areas. Next is... Pioneering period began also in 1973 and its program or policy is family approach to reforestation or BFD circular number 45 series of 1973. The Bureau of Forest Development entered into short-term contracts with families to set up tree plantations in public lands. Next is Forestry Reform Code or PD number 705. Kaingeros, squatters, and other occupants who entered forest zones before May 19, 1975 shall not be prosecuted provided they did that they do not expand their clearings and that they undertake forest protection and conservation activities recommended by the government. Pioneer period began also in 1976. Forest Occupancy Management Program 
allowed bona fide forest occupants to develop the lands they were occupying or cultivating, but with a specific provision that the subject land should not exceed 7 hectares per occupant. Renewable two-year forest occupancy permit issued and uh, issued to participate participating kaingenos. Next is the common communal tree farming program or Ministry Administrative Order Number no. Two Series of 1979. So every city and municipality on the country was expected to establish tree farms. Reforestation in open and denuded forest lands was to be undertaken through the involvement of forest, of forest occupants, civic organizations, and municipal government units. Pioneering also, pioneering period began also in 1963 and its program or policy is Revised Kaingen Law or RA 3701. Its feature is Actual forest occupants and shifting cultivators were clearly defined as those residents and agricultural farmers who introduced improvements to obtain profit from forest land. That's all, thank you. Integration and Consolidation Period 1982 Integrated Social Forestry Program Letter of Instruction Number 1260 This was designed to maximize land productivity, enhance ecological stability, and improve the socioeconomic conditions of forest occupants and, and communities. Through the issue of, of a stewardship agreement, participants in the program are granted the right to, in, to inhabit and develop forest lands for a term of 25 years, renewable, renewable for another 25 years. 1989, General Rules and Regulations on the Participation of NGOs in the NRS Programs. The DNR, DNR will support and promote non-governmental organizations or NGOs to participate in natural resource development, management, and protection. A national NGO desk is in charge of accrediting NGOs that are eligible to participate in DNR projects. Its basic objectives are, number one, to provide the system for greater DNR-NGO collaboration. Second is to ensure genuine NGO participation in DNR programs. And third is to provide a mechanism of accreditation of NGOs which are involved in DNR concerns. 1989 Community Forestry Program The Community Forestry Management Agreement is granted to organize upland communities for a 25-year period extendable for another 25 year period communities who design a develop development plan and follow the principles of sustainable yield management are granted forest utilization privileges community forestry management is a powerful paradigm that arose from the failure of state forest governance to assure the long-term viability of forest resources and equal access to to and benefits from them 1991 local government code the local government code was enacted into law giving local government entities autonomy and responsibility for providing fundamental services its goal was to improve service delivery of the at the grassroots level as well as resource allocation efficiency local government units are responsible for for implementing social forestry and replanting efforts, managing communal communal forests up to 5,000 he hectares, protecting small watershed re regions, and enforcing forest laws. 1983, delineation of ancestral land and domain claims. This provide for the recognition and, pro and protection of the rights of the indigenous cultural communities 
to their ancestral lands to ensure their economic, social, and well-being. Indigenous tribes are required to meet with provincial special task forces on ancestral domains in order to, to verify ancestral domain claims and determine foreign forest boundaries. Indigenous tribes receive certificates of ancestral domain, domain claims once their claims are approved. Good day everyone, I'm your reporter for Institutionalization Period. Institutionalization is a large expansion and development of the role of a particular organization wherein period means a space of time between two events of time. So this is the time of development and expansion of CBFM or the Community-Based Forest Management. This is the evolution of CBFM. In 1995, the adaptation of Community-Based Forest Management or CBFM as the National Strategy for Sustainable Development of Forest Lands is programmed, in which CBFM is being held as the National Strategy to Achieve Sustainable Forestry and Social Justice. CBFM also integrates all people-oriented forestry programs and projects of the government. Rules and Regulations for Implementation of EO263, otherwise known as the CBFM Strategy, DAO 29 Series of 1996, is programmed in the year 1996, wherein local communities shall prepare their respective community resource management frameworks with the assistance of the DENR, LGUs, NGOs, and other government agencies. When the year 1997 came, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, or RAA 371, is implemented, <clears throat> in which it mandates the state to protect the rights of the Indigenous culture and their ancestral domains to ensure their economic, social, and cultural well-being. In 1998, the Manual of Procedures on Devolved and Other Forest Management Functions, or DNER, DILG Joint Memorandum Circular Number 9801, wherein this manual operationalizes and makes effective devolution of forest management functions from the DENR to the local government units. Year 2003 came, strengthening and institu institutionalizing the DENR, DILG, LGU partnership, wherein these guidelines and instructions for DENR, DILG, and LGUs in accelerating collaboration, partnership, and coordination. In the year 2004, Promoting Sustainable Forest Management in the Philippines is being programmed. It is the time that CBFM shall remain the primary strategy in all forest conservation and development and related activities. However, in the same year, the revised rules and regulations for the implementation of CBFM strategy is also programmed. This is the improvement from the 1996 CBFM. This time, it allows more flexibility to participating communities, such as the requirement of a five-year work plan instead of annual work plan. Alright, as what you observe from the year 1996, the adaptation of CBFM, then presenting its rules and regulations, next, they give importance to the culture of the indigenous people up to the partnership of DENR, DILG, and LGU. It is also expanded through promoting the sustainable forest management in the Philippines. That's all, thank you.